Hi, I'm Emma Swainsfoots and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these useless machines 2.0. I call it 2.0 because it's significantly different to the previous version I released. When you turn the machine on, the alarm comes out, just turns the box off again. That's all it does, completely useless. Okay. So when you first get your kit, it's going to be a pile of parts like this. There's a little bag of electronics and a whole bunch of wooden parts. You've got the big skin to the box there, a little flap that goes on there, a spacer that separates the top from the bottom, and two side panels. I'm just going to put all of these to one side and show you the electronics. So in the bag of electronics you get the little motor mount, a wooden hammer, a AAA battery box, geared motor, the toggle switch, a limit switch, the all important PCB, two screw terminals and some screws for fixings. So we're going to start with the PCB. On one side of the PCB, let me show you just here, there, there's, there's a little square on the top here. That shows you which side that the toggle switch is going to go on. So the toggle switch fits neatly into there. It's quite a tight fit, so I tend to push it down against the table. What we want is to push it all the way down and flush against this side, but we don't want it standing proud on this side of the board because the limit switch is going to go up against that side. So once we've got that in, then we want to solder these connections. I like to use a piece of blue tack as a third hand. Some people have those crocodile things with the magnifying clips, whatever works for you. We've got that limit switch on, toggle switch on. I'm just going to bring a little bit of solder in on each of these six connections. We don't want a big blob of solder. As I said, we don't want it to stand proud because the limit switch is going to go on there next. Once we've got all of these done, like that. And I'm going to bring in that limit switch next. The limit switch just sits on top of there like that. And again from this side, just going to bring in the soldering iron and, and solder the three legs of that down. And a final bit of soldering for the PCB are these two screw terminals. They've got little connectors on the sides so that you can fit them together. I tend to do that because then when you push them in there that holds itself together quite firmly. And I'm going to flip that over and just solder these four legs. And that is the PCB soldered. Got our toggle switch on one side, that's what the hammer flips. A limit switch which detects when it's gone too far back and screw terminals for the battery and the motor. So we'll just put that up there. Next we'll prepare the battery box. So these have fairly long wires, a bit too long for our purpose. So we're going to fold these in half, cut those at the top there. And these two spare wires are going to go on our motor and allow us to connect our motor to the, uh, to the PCB. So obviously we need to strip these ends now. Once 
strip tins. Just like to tin them with a little bit of solder. Just makes them easier to, to stick down in the future. And these wires need to go on the motor. So with the motor that way round, this red wire goes in through the top terminal and the black wire on the bottom terminal. And because they're pre-tinned, it's very easy just to put a spot more solder on there and hold those in place. So that's all the soldering done. Next we're going to connect the motors to the PCB. That's where the screw terminals come in. There's a little um, indicator on here that says motor on the left hand side, battery on the right hand side and plus, minus, plus, minus. So we take the red wire from the motor Connect it on that far left hand side. Screw that down. Take the black wire, if I can get hold of that. Put that one in next to it. And it's red, black, red, black. All the way across. That's our electronics done. We have to raid the batteries out of this kit quickly. So, in order to make this a bit clearer, which way the motor's turning, we're going to put, connect the hammer to it but we should also connect the motor mount first because the motor mount goes over there and then the hammer goes on top of the shaft. So we take these, these two big screws, hold those in there. If you just turn them in this motor mount lightly, it holds them in place. We get a suitable crosshead screwdriver in there. And just screw this all the way up. These are self-tapping screws, so they can be quite tight. Make sure they're screwed all the way down. Keeps it all nice and sturdy. There we go. Next up is the hammer. Now there's a little engraved indent on the back of this hammer, which is like a circle with two flat spots. That mates exactly with the output shaft of the geared motor. So make sure those two align and give that a firm push down. Like that. And then we drop this little screw in through the top there and bring that Phillips screwdriver back to screw that down. Now we want to screw this one up nice and tight. You can screw this one all the way down so that it sits flush with the top of this hammer. Uh, you can press the wood slightly, but that makes sure that it's not going to slip during operation. You also want to try and make sure that the hammer is parallel with the motor mount, uh, and that gives it the best chance of hitting the switch as it comes up. So that's our electronics ready for a test. Just notice this black wire's fallen out of the screw terminal. So when I connect the battery here, with the switch to the left, the hammer should turn clockwise. With the switch to the right, the hammer turns anti-clockwise until I push the limit switch, then the motor stops. That's a functional test. Let me disconnect the battery. I only need to pull one out 
that stops the mechanism running while we assemble it into the box. I'm going to bring that skin back over here. So there's a nut and a washer on the top of this toggle switch. Just disconnect those for a second. Feed the toggle switch in through that hole in the centre of the skin. Washer down, nut down. Tear that up. And just like to pinch this tight with a pair of pliers. There we go. And I want to make sure that that PCB is vertical in the box there. So the motor mount comes in alongside here. There's a tab on the top of that motor mount that fits into the skin there. That's all in place. If I bring that battery back in again and do a test, you can see that we now have a functional useless machine. Put that other spacer in the other side. So the battery will eventually tuck up around right there. Now, sides of the box. Got two sides of the box. You know which side is the inside because it has these little extra scorch marks around the side. So that is our left hand side with this little hole. That needs to tuck all the way up into there and that will clip down with a fairly firm click. Got the little flap here. Got the two pins on the flap. These make up the hinge. This pin needs to go all the way down onto the side here and tuck into there. Now I'm going to use my hand to keep that flap at a slight angle. That just allows me to get the other side down onto here and clip that into there. So that flap should start to rotate freely and we're ready to close the box up. I'm going to tuck that battery into there, swing the whole thing round. These wires can get in the way a little bit, we do just push them down. And we wrap, start to wrap this skin round and line these tabs up. Again, the first time you close this box those tabs can be a little bit tight. We bring this skin all the way around and start to clip it into the bottom. And now we've got the other side of these, the motor mount. We just want to make sure that that's aligned with the bottom of the skin and the spacer on the other side. Once that's all aligned, give it a bit of a squeeze. Wiggle it all down. And then just push that skin back into these clips on the side here. Do the same again with the top. Rotate that round. Hook it into those four connectors. Close it down. Job's done. How to build your very own useless machine. So you can get this kit from mswainsford.co.uk uh, and if you want the written instructions you can also find it linked from the website there. Thanks for watching.